Hello, I'm Chris Barrow with the BBC News. Ecuador's powerful coalition of indigenous communities has agreed to suspend more than two weeks of acrimonious protests after signing an agreement with the government. Kat Wiener reports. The agreement, following talks mediated by the Roman Catholic Church, brings to an end the sometimes violent demonstrations over the high cost of living, soaring fuel prices and the economic policies of President Guillermo Lasso. Petrol and diesel prices will be reduced and the government has also agreed to set limits to the expansion of oil exploration and mining in protected areas. For 18 days, thousands of mainly indigenous protesters had paralysed the country with roadblocks, prompting the government to impose a state of emergency. Clashes with the security forces left five civilians and one soldier dead. The government now has 90 days to deliver on its commitments. The Biden administration has condemned a Supreme Court ruling which curbs the US government's power to limit carbon emissions from coal-fired power stations. The White House said it was a devastating decision. Andres Restrepo, who's a senior attorney with an environmental law organisation that was involved in the case, labelled the ruling disappointing. The court read the Clean Air Act to limit the authority of EPA not to control greenhouse gases, period. That was not quite right. The agency still has authority to control greenhouse gases. Although this this decision is certainly a blow and certainly a setback, there are still tools that the federal government has to control not just power plants, but the transportation sector, the oil and gas sector, and from state and local governments to uh, facilitate that transition away from fossil fuel fire generation. Share prices on Wall Street have suffered their biggest losses for the first half of the year, for more than half a century. All three leading share indicators in New York have fallen steeply, with the S&P 500 down by 20% from its peak in early January. From New York, here's Samira Hussein. The Federal Reserve's regional bank in Atlanta has a closely watched model for the gross domestic product, which today signaled that the U.S. economy will have shrunk again in the second quarter of the year. So would fit the conventional definition of two quarters of shrinking, which would make a recession. And adding to the economic woes, inflation is already at a 40-year high, the cost of borrowing is going up, and consumer confidence is taking a tumble. Corporations are already starting to batten down the hatches in preparation for what's to come. The governor of the Luhansk region in eastern Ukraine says there's been no let-up in Russia's relentless shelling of Lysychansk. Serhi Haidai said Russian forces were approaching the besieged city from all sides. But he said there wasn't yet fighting in the streets. This is the latest world news from the BBC. Protests against military rule have continued late into the evening in parts of Sudan after a day in which eight people are reported to have been killed. Doctors say hundreds more were injured during big pro-democracy rallies in the capital Khartoum, as well as other cities including Omdurman and Port Sudan. Since last October, when military leaders toppled the transitional government in a coup, there have been frequent mass rallies. Israel has a new prime minister, the centrist Yair Lapid, He's replaced Naftali Bennett as part of a power-sharing deal. Mr Lapid has taken over in a caretaker capacity until elections are held in November. Our correspondent in Jerusalem is Yolan Nell. It's a decade since Yair Lapid turned from being a political commentator to a politician. Now, as he steps in as caretaker prime minister, he'll be looking to prove that he should stay in the job. But the former amateur boxer will face attacks from his longtime rival Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's longest serving leader, whom he successfully knocked out of office a year ago. Mr. Lapid formed an unusual coalition with eight ideologically diverse political parties. But recently, it had been struggling with infighting and lost its majority, leading to a decision to dissolve the parliament. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has tempered comments he made last week following the deaths of at least 23 migrants on the border between Morocco and the Spanish enclave of Melilla. He told a Spanish online newspaper that he had not seen pictures of corpses at the scene when he praised the response of the security forces to the storming of the border fence by hundreds of migrants. A British MP responsible for maintaining discipline within the Conservative Party has resigned from the government after complaints about drunken behaviour. Chris Pincher admitted he'd embarrassed himself and others. Witnesses say he was extremely drunk at a members' club in London on Wednesday night. BBC News.